One of our main studies in this class is the Barrier Island and Honeymoon Island State Park in Dunedin is uh, a place that we visit every semester. Hopefully you viewed or you're going to view the video shorts that we've posted in conjunction with this. This is a uh, tour of Honeymoon Island. We're going to discuss the Osprey, the Pelican Trails, a lot of the things you'll see. Uh, we also have uh, videos shot on each of these trails for you to watch uh, in conjunction with your visit. Again, sometimes visiting places are impossible, especially like during a pandemic or during a hurricane. Uh, a lot of times they close up shop and in times of trouble, this will suffice. You'll have all the information to do a solid write-up and a good job. Uh, of course, it's mandatory that you go on several field trips because it's a field class, and this is one that I chose to make mandatory, if at all possible, because barrier islands are our main uh, coastal habitats. They contain micro habitats of almost everything we're going to study. So an epiphyte is a plant that grows on another plant. And in the uh, videos, again, we talked a little bit about epiphytes, but here is some stills of some epiphytes. You have the Virginia creeper in the top left, and then Spanish moss and the air plants. They are bromeliads, which means they're related to the pineapple. Then you have a little uh, poison ivy on the right. Uh, on the Osprey Trail, it's named the Osprey Trail because there's a lot of snags with nests. So there's our friend, the Osprey. Uh, you can see the nest and the snag in the middle picture. Uh, take note of the bird in the upper right-hand corner, and he's flying, carrying a fish. They hold their fish streamlined with their body, where hawks and eagles hold it perpendicular to their body. Uh, they, that's how they fly. Their talons are a little bit smaller and the wind drag would knock them off because they're not as uh, stout a bird as an eagle, a little, little smaller. So that's how they fly. They also make a little peeping noise, peep, peep, peep. And you can see uh, one of the images has the bird carrying some, some uh, Spanish moss. Uh, they're going to line their nests. They return to the same nest every year and just add to it and uh, line their nests. Uh, it was exciting. I showed you where the owl was uh, in the video. We didn't see it at the time, but then my daughter and I doubled back and we found it. Uh, got some pictures. There's a picture of it right there. It was a little too far away to do a video because the zoom on the video camera is not as strong as on my, my handheld. Uh, so that was our friend the owl that we couldn't get down the video. Uh, right there and they have a, a placard in, in its general vicinity you have to look up in the trees and they're well camouflaged and and they sit up high because they don't want to be disturbed we also saw some black vultures perching uh, in the trees and, and there's a, a black vulture as well just a fun fact about the vultures the they're the only birds without feathers on their heads and that's because they stick their uh, head and neck into carcasses. Oh, there's some shots of the osprey. Uh, eyelids. The one on the left is blinking and the one on the right wide open. It's the same, same bird. I just happened to look up on the osprey trail and he was watching and uh, clicked a couple pictures. I think they came out quite good. Uh, we talked about the pines a lot in the videos. Here we're looking at the three pines side by side. The slash pine, which is a fast growing uh, opportunistic pine. The long leaf, and you can see how long those needles are. And then the sand pine grows in the drier, uh, less forwarded, the sandier areas. Because, you know, the sand pine. Uh, conifers are non-flowering plants, but they do reproduce using multi-celled sex organs, so they are true plants. And the male cone on the left is how they produce pollen. The female 
parts on the right, the cones, the pollen fertilizes, they mature into the seeds, the cones drop, fire scorches them, they're fire tolerant. Uh, there's the crossroads, one of the crossroads that you take from the osprey to the pelican. And they have a giant cedar on it. And that cedar you can see evergreen, not leaves. So it's a not a flowering plant. And in the video we talk about uh, some of the uses for the woods and some of the Native American lore attached to the cedar. Uh, we also talked a little bit about lantana in the, the video, so we won't uh, redo that so when you watch your videos. But on the right, you can see the stem has jagged edges on the saw palmetto. There's two variants, the smooth and the soft. The only way you can uh, tell the difference is um, by, by, by observation. Uh, sea grapes, sea grapes are in season in this picture and actually they're in season now, I saw them today. Uh, very leathery, thick, tough leaves, uh, dune scrub plants, those ant lions, ant lions, uh, right there, the ant lion, that is a larva for a flying beetle. And they, they, they dig out this and they, they, they lay in wait there while they're, um, juveniles. And if an ant falls in, they'll snatch it with their jaws and yank it down. A la Star Wars, the third movie, which is really the sixth movie. Uh, where Leia has like getting that that big worm is making him snap 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 over the uh, yeah ant lions. That's that's the living uh, creature that that uh, was modeled after. Uh, poison ivy, three leaves, telltale sign. Can be freestanding. Can be epiphytic. Grows uh, in a vine. The wax myrtle we saw in the video was uh, being smothered by love vines. Here it's just a uh, free, freestanding. Uh, you can see the shiny, waxy leaves, how it got its name. Ferns uh, are sporulating plants. Remember, they don't have flowers. They don't even make seeds. They use spores. So they're pretty low on the evolutionary complex scale. Uh, our Boots, no boots. We mentioned boots in the uh, video, so we won't belabor the point, but that's our state tree. Uh, and the palmetto, teeth, no teeth. You got to go up and have a look. Some of the other things on the uh, trail, you can see we saw a uh, morning dove. Uh, oh, a random fish in a tree, some, some scat. Uh, Spanish bayonet in the lower uh, portion, that's really spiky. Uh, there's some love vine in the uh, upper right hand and uh, a great egret. Now, how do I know it's a great egret? I look at its beak and it's orange. The snowy egret has a black beak. So that's a great egret. Uh, some painted leaf. Painted leaf is our poinsettia that grows wild in Florida. And then there's a pretty cool shot of a dragonfly looked out. And I thought it was pretty, so I included it. Uh, more pictures of the osprey. You can see it's got a ladyfish, ladyfish in the uh, right hand. He's, he or she's having a feast. Uh, low, you see it landing on its nest, and it has the, um, the Spanish moss that keeps it insulated for, for the young. Uh, these shots were by a student of mine. Uh, that had a fancy camera, loved photography. This was a couple of years ago, Eagle's Nest. We talked about it in the video. It's at the uh, loop, the farthest loop on the trail. Uh, you can go see it. The nest is in a large pine tree. Uh, the osprey and eagles, they're not the best of friends. You can see how much larger the eagle is and it would, that's how it can carry larger fish and, and such, but, but the osprey is a little more agile in the air. And they're competing for the resources, so so they're not they're not pals. They're they're not having a conversation. They're one's driving the other off. Um, there's eaglets. That's what the uh, baby eagles look like. Real little in the upper right, and then um, full sized yet not uh, wearing adult plumage yet in the lower uh, right. 
There's uh, some pictures of the owls as well. Uh, so that's common uh, in Honeymoon Island. Uh, hawk, yep, there, there's the occasional hawk. They're not as common, not as common. Uh, cardinals and the uh, red-headed woodpecker. Red-headed woodpecker, love those snags. They uh, get the bugs that are eating the uh, wood and that's their diet. Uh, on the pelican trail, now we can look at the white mangroves. We mentioned uh, tattered, often tattered leaves. And there they are. They're, they're kind of oval, a little, little thicker. They are the most salt tolerant of the mangroves. Uh, in the center, you can see a black mangrove propagule, a baby black mangrove, just starting to grow, and a red mangrove propagule that that young man's holding up. The propagules go right on the tree. They drop off and float away. Uh, it's a full plant when it drops off, so it's analogous to a live birth. It's the only plant that germinates and grows right on it and then pops off and floats off. And it's, that uh, is called a propagule. Uh, there's the dead man's fingers on the left for the black mangrove, black mangrove that aerates the soil. They're also, they're, they're scientifically called pneumatophores. And on the right, you have some prop roots coming right down off of the branches. And that is how they grow out over the water, drop their roots down, trap sediments. The Native Americans called them walking trees for this because they walk out toward the water and build up land. Uh, so there's the propagules hanging on the red mangrove. And uh, most, most uh, you know, mangroves have a little mix. So you have a mix of baby reds and baby blacks there in that uh, little pool trying to uh, colonize. Uh, that beautiful butterfly on the uh, left. And on the right, there's the bunch grass sea oats. We talk about that in the video when we look at the dunes, how they are very important. Uh, of course, being opportunistic, this was in a scrub area and the wind blew and the, the, the CO germinated and was able to survive. So it's a little out of place, but it's hardy and doing well in the scrub area of uh, the Pelican Trail, the back, back uh, area of the Pelican Trail. Uh, on the right, you have a mangrove periwinkle, mangrove periwinkle. On the left, a sacrificial leaf. And then you can see some of the buttonwood mixed in on the left too, down in the lower, those are a little buttonwood. But on the uh, right, uh, you can see the mangrove periwinkle. That is a, uh, a snail that lives in the mangroves, breathes air. Uh, beach sunflower again. And of course the Brazilian pepper, that uh, leaf pattern we discussed in the video. And then there it is in season with the peppercorns that the birds uh, spread out. Now, don't eat a Brazilian pepper. It will give you diarrhea. Uh, railroad vine in the lower left with the purple morning glory variant and the seaside purslane, and it is edible. Uh, we had a brave soul there try to eat one on one of our tours, uh, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, you're just picking it up off the forest floor, but I wouldn't go against it either. I'm told it's very salty. Beauty berries, one of my favorite plants. They make jam out of them. Uh, and look, on the right, we got the white morning glory variant that we saw growing on the beach as well in the video. So uh, they're beautiful flowers. And the beauty berries, I, I think they're really cool. Uh, they, they grow these little bunches of berries and uh, they're real pretty. Uh, back in the, uh, uh, you know, on the way back on the Pelican Trail, you can pop in through the mangroves and there's salt marsh mud flat there. You can see the mud flat. There's a little bit underwater and then the salt marsh. So you have a low tide, but not the lowest tide. So you have a, a mud flat in the shallows. There's salt marsh. And you can see some mangroves toward the back starting to uh, creep into that salt marsh. But that is Spartina, the emergent vegetation. And on the left, we all know what that is. Ouch. Uh, salty leaves are one way the black mangrove 
gets rid of the salt, maintains its uh, osmotic balance. Notice their leaves are really long and slender, pennate, if you will. So the black mangrove has the long, slender leaves, and they're kind of a silvery, shiny on the back. Uh, the limulus, the horseshoe crab, is the only marine arthropod non-crustacean that we commonly see. It's in an ancient group, the limulus. It has the copper-based blood. Uh, so really it's a living fossil because it's the last of a uh, once proud lineage that included things like trilobites. That, that's the only survivor from Cambrian time till now. Uh, again, oh, the Indian blanket's kind of a pretty, pretty flower. And the uh, Blue Ocean Morning Glory. So there's some pretty flowers just growing on the side, side of the trail. Uh, you can see the reindeer moss up top. Reindeer moss. Another epiphyte, the muscadine grape. Uh, right. And then there's a vulture. A little too far to tell whether it's uh, got a black head or a red head. But you can tell it's a vulture because the wingtips point up like a V. So in the field, identifying V. The uh, prickly pear cactus is our native cactus on the lower left. And then there is a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes are common on this island. You can see the sign. Rattlesnakes are common on this island as you pull in. Uh, we've only run into one rattlesnake for the 12 years. I've been bringing classes two, sometimes three times a year. Uh, that was a picture that was taken by a student uh, when they stayed and hiked. So I personally did not get that picture. I take most of the pictures, but you know, students send me beautiful pictures that they sue. I tell them I'll use them. You know, you send it to me, I will use it. Uh, makes my presentations uh, better. Um, again, eating the seaside purslane, uh, brave soul right there, uh, taking notes about it. Uh, we have the Wild peas, the butterfly and the partridge pea on the right. They were in full bloom today when my daughter and I went there. Uh, beautiful little flowers. Uh, there's another one of those lucky shots sometimes you get, the dragonfly. And, uh, you know, that's just a lucky shot. Some of the common birds, uh, the great egret. Great egret, you can see the... Oyster catcher on the right, the brown pelicans, they're all juvenile. Oh, no, the juvenile's on the bottom, and the adult in the middle uh, has the white stripe for the head. So juvenile brown head, adult white. Uh, the sandwich turn in the upper left, that sandwich turn has a little whitish or yellowish tip on its beak. So sandwich turn, you can think of got caught with a little mustard, sandwich mustard. Uh, Roseate spoonbill, reddish egret, uh, one of the lesser common egrets in the area. It hunts by dancing, kick, 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 and then pecking its sediment up, and then the great blue heron in the upper right. Uh, the white pelicans, that is our seasonal resident. They are a large bird. Uh, turkey vulture, turkey vulture below, I can make out a little red on the head. And uh, the bald eagle, of course. The roseate spoonbill down in the marsh, pretty beautiful bird. Uh, just a, a word to the wise, wear bug spray, because if you don't, you're going to donate blood. You might get a laugh when you watch the videos, because I'm slapping my legs, and my poor daughter, she... She didn't want sunscreen, and uh, it backfired today because uh, she wound up being the number one blood donor for the day in Pinellas County. So uh, thank you for watching this. Enjoy your trip. Wear bug spray, and uh, take a lot of pictures. Thank you.